So I'd also like to introduce uh, our next set of uh, uh, grand keynote speakers. And we are very thankful for them for taking time out for this. We have Amir Hossein, Executive Vice President and Chief Technology Officer, CenturyLink. Uh, Amir is an entrepreneur by heart and leader of the product development and technology organization within CenturyLink. He sits on several startup and nonprofit boards, is technical advisor to technology companies, and holds 11 patents in telecommunications, and has more than 23 years of proven success. Prior to joining CenturyLink, he held senior leadership roles at Liberty Global, Coed, TELUS, and Quest. We also have Tom Riley, uh, CEO of Cloudera. Tom is a visionary and has a distinguished 30 year career in the enterprise software market. Tom earlier served as CEO of ArcSight and Trigo Technologies. Uh, Tom currently serves as a board member for Jive Software, privately held Ombud, Threadstream, and Cloudera. And we also have, as Jack just mentioned, Gary Gaba, President CenturyLink Cognolytics. And that's what Jack was mentioning about three times successful entrepreneur he just met. So Jack, uh, Gary has been uh, a visionary also, and he recently merged his company, uh, CenturyLink, uh, with CenturyLink in December. He's also a longtime board member and convener during 2009-2010. CenturyLink and Cognolytics are also grand sponsors of Tycon. We thank them for the generous support. So thank you so much, and I'd like to welcome next speakers on stage. Okay. Thank you, Sara. Uh, uh, what an inspiring keynote from uh, Jack and Susie. Uh, really inspiring. I guess we have a tough act to follow out here, but we'll try to step it up. It's an honor to have Tom and Amir out here with me today. And before I really get into the, the topic of uh, a transformational journey towards a new data economy, we got Cloudera, CenturyLink. It will be good for them to share what was the genesis of each of the companies? And maybe, Tom, I'll start with you, right? Uh, how did uh, these engineers from Yahoo, Facebook, Google, and Mike Olson started this company, and how the transformation is shaping up in Cloudera? And Amir, uh, you have some time to think about it. I know CenturyLink <laughs> has been around there since 1930, 85 years. You got a lot to think. All right, Tom? Well, so uh, Cloudera is a seven-year-old uh, startup. And uh, the, the concept actually came from a white paper published by Google in 2004. Uh, and this basis white paper explained how Google figured out how to index the World Wide Web, one of the largest data sets in the world. And that led to uh, a gentleman named um, Doug Cutting to uh, create this software called Hadoop and uh, put it into uh, the open source community. Uh, and it's uh, that decision to put it into open source, which actually has led to uh, the tremendous company I'm with called Cloudera, because uh, we now have a community of uh, open source developers that are building the next generation of data management. Great, great, great. So Amir, you know, uh, again, CenturyLink to me is a hidden secret. Obviously, we became part of CenturyLink in December, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't know till that time they're Fortune 150, with 48,000 employees in five continents, third largest telco, 20% of the global internet traffic going through the network, 50-year data centers. How did it start in 1930? And where are they today? And what's the transformational journey you guys are going through? You know, it's, it's been an amazing journey. I mean, I call this company an 85-year-old startup. We are still in a startup mode, or an emer some say emerging. Emerging company, right? So the company started in 1931 with 75 lines. It was purchased. Oak Ridge Telephone Company was going under, and our founder bought it for $500. And how, how much did he bought it for? $500. $500. $500. Okay. So, you know, okay. so we have now over 18 and a half, 19 billion revenue, and you know, we are, we are worldwide, multiple hundreds of data centers worldwide, hundreds of thousands of miles of access of fiber and all kind of services. But from 31, 1931 to 46, the company was stagnant. Um, our, it was given as a gift by his parents. Our founder got it in 1946. But in 46 and 1971, we had 10,000 lines. We went public in 78. During 78 and 2000, we really grew, right? So we bought lots of properties from Verizon and Meritech, um, you know, Sprint, Wildline Arm, Embark. 
And then towards 2007 and 8, the company started really evolving. In 2011, we closed the acquisition of Quest US West, uh, and it became the third largest telco in the US. Since then, we have acquired five other companies. We have invested three and a half billion dollars building out our data center, cloud business, and we continue to grow, and that's where we met you also. I mean, you know, I'm gonna turn it around and ask you, what made you join CenturyLink? Because, I mean, we definitely see a value in this business. What about you? Yeah, so to me, right, uh, you know, we were in the big data and the predictive business, and our instead vision was big data and analytics as a service. And to truly become a global dominant leader in that space, we were missing assets like the network, the data center, and the cloud. And we were also missing the presence in five continents, right? And 98% of the Fortune 500 companies as your clients, right? So it was uh, very easy and simple uh, to make that decision uh, uh, to be part of CenturyLink. Right. So, so now let me ask you this, right? You said you guys acquired Quest. What, there were 14 billion in revenue at that time? How big was uh, CenturyLink at that time? CenturyLink was about three, three and a half billion. And you guys yeah. went on and grabbed a $14 billion company. Yeah, it's, a, it's really a testament to our management. You know, mm -hmm. they are very, very financially savvy. And I, as I said, I called it a startup because we are ready for transformation. We've been transforming our company for the last 40 years, right? And really 85 years if you count the initial stage of the, of, of the, of the company start. Mm -hmm. But we continue to look for gems. You know, we are trying to pick different industry models. We, you know, you always want to build your company for the future, right? And as the CTO of the company, my job is to figure out where the, the puck is going to be and just make sure we are already there. And we are not big on building everything internally. You know, we find nuggets like Cognolytics, Orchestrate, Data Guy. I mean, in the last three months, you know, we, we have acquired Literally three different companies. So you're telling me, right, if you meet some emerging entrepreneurs, right, uh, you can give them an offer out here today before absolutely. 5 p.m.? <laughs> well, you know, absolutely. So thank you for that cue. Uh, we actually have built a huge technology, technology center in Louisiana. And uh, my mandate is to really find the right companies that we want to work with in the future. Help them innovate by being a part of our ecosystem, at the same time help them grow. So that's one of the biggest reasons I was here with us today. No, I know uh, when we were hearing Jack and Susie, right, Jack talked about people a lot, right? It talked about, right, you gotta really get out of your shell. And I was thinking, right, uh, you know, the entrepreneurial journey really starts with dream. And you gotta dream big, right? So Tom, maybe you want to talk about that a little bit, right? Uh, what, uh, what does it really take, right? Uh, to me, it doesn't cost a dream, right? And, uh... All right, um, well, so first I'll make a confession to this audience. I, I am no entrepreneur. And I've realized that by myself, I'm not an entrepreneur. Uh, what I think I'm good at is recognizing and following good entrepreneurs. So I'm in my third uh, company where I've come in as CEO behind great entrepreneurs, and, and what I can do is scale. But here's what I've learned about entrepreneurs, and now I'm in a, I, I have lots of folks coming to me with uh, new uh, ideas for businesses. And it's that one word that kind of captures me. Uh, when people say, I have an idea, I am not that interested, because ideas aren't necessarily enduring. When people come and say, they start off their, their notion for a company with a statement that says, what if? What if, and, and they continue that, you then realize this person has a purpose or they have a broad vision. And those, those are the people you wanna back. Those are the people you wanna be with. Not a good idea, because a good idea does not make a business. But a purpose and a vision and a what if statement uh, is something that's enduring. I was with our founders of Cloudera uh, just uh, last night. We had a, a bit of a celebratory dinner. And these founders, you know, seven years in, are still in the what if. You know, we're not, we haven't achieved their original vision. And that is what's enduring. And you have to look for these enduring visions that are almost impossible to solve. And I think that makes great companies. Great, great. To me, you know, the market is changing so fast, right? And the topic of a fireside uh, transformational journey towards a new data economy. You know, a lot of the CEOs of Fortune 500 companies uh, I've met, and uh, a lot of the ones you have met, right? The big thing is transformation, right? How do we uh, embark on this journey, right? Using innovation, 
And, and to me, you know, the big topic is all around the data economy. How do we monetize, right? And uh, you know, some of the surveys are showing over the next decade, 40 percent of the Fortune 500 companies may not be there if they don't really step up the game, think out of the box, right? So Tom, why don't you define, right, what, what does the, the data economy mean to you? What does uh, that mean from the transformational journey uh, across various verticals? And Amir, same question is coming to you. Yeah, so um, we all know that the world's getting connected, right? Fully instrumented, and the Internet of Things means everything that's running off electricity in some way or another is going to be sending data back in. And we're wearing those things. I like to say, you know, the cars we drive is the world's largest wearable. Uh, my car has 200 sensors on it streaming back to uh, the manufacturer. And so if you're in an industry and you're not thinking about how to take advantage of this new data that is streaming in, uh, you are going to get disrupted. And, um, and I was talking earlier about, you know, the what if. I, I'm so excited about what I'm doing at Cloudera because I get to go to executives and in insurance companies and healthcare companies and financial institutions and have these what if statements. You go to an auto insurer and you say, what if you could build auto insurance policies based on how individuals actually drive? Do they do rolling stops? Do they speed? Do they drive on freeways more than they do on, uh, in you know, malls or what have you? Uh, if you can go to a, a healthcare provider and say, what if you could monitor all type one diabetics, continually monitor their, their blood uh, glucose levels, their exercise habits, their diets? You know, what if, and you go through every industry and you can have a what if conversation and it's powerful. And if these executives in every industry, whether it's healthcare, telecommunications, financial services, manufacturing, uh, the manufacturing industry is changing because of data. People are no longer selling equipment. They're leasing and offering equipment as a service, right? And so we're, we're working with a large battery manufacturer. Big batteries are in data centers. And they sell the batteries, and then they sell contracts to support and maintain them. Well, now they're, all these batteries are phone, phoning home, and they're switching from selling batteries to offering batteries as a service. This is the, the, the what if, you know, uh, is the future and how you use data to transform business. And well, so, well, so, so Amir, right, uh, since uh, Tom also mentioned with IoT, right, 14 billion to 50 billion connected things by 2020 and the new data economy, why don't you share your views and also, right, what kind of opportunity is creating for the entrepreneurs out there to create their next business, right? Let me, let me start with the first transformation yep. and touch base on what Tom said. He said something that made me think a little bit. First, let's define transformation, yep. right? So transformation for us is transformation of processes, our product, our customers, and it's all driven by the pace of innovation. In the last five to 10 years, we've seen more innovation than the 20 years preceding. Now, that drives ourselves to become more profitable, reduce our cost, enhance our processes. And this whole notion of IoT is actually helping that. We have more data coming out than we can actually handle. Right? So that's why we need a partnership with companies like Cloudera. We got to take that data real time, process it. You know, we have about 75 to 100 terabit of data that we see at any given point in time. We only monetize, and I, I, monetization is a stretch, about 15 to 20 percent. That is structured. The rest of the data, it just goes in the river, right? So now we are trying to work on solutions in partnering with companies like Cloudera so that we can actually take that data and improve our CRM systems, improve our HR efficiency. Are we hiring the right people? And you heard Jack talked about all the people of power, right? Enhance our financial and legal systems. And at the end of the day, have happy customers. And so that's where IoT is important. And, and IoT is really going to challenge some of the legacy ways of doing things. I mean, you take your company, Analytics, when you bought that, one of the biggest reasons was is all that data, you can't just take it and look at it sequentially and analyze it effectively unless you have new algorithms in place to be able to use that data effectively. No, absolutely. So I'm a related question, right? Uh, uh, you know, 20% of this global internet data goes through your network, right? So I know there are a lot of cricket fans out here. World Cup cricket just ended, right? Uh, India was beaten by Australia. 
So based on that data and the chatter, were you able to predict that Australia is going to be the ultimate winner? You know what? Can yeah. you give us some tips for the next World Cup? <laughs> you, 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 so you have to think from your brain, but work from your heart. So my money was in India, yeah. <laughs> but the, your algorithm was suggesting we should really put money on Australia, but I, I was a loser, but Australia won. <laughs> And Tom, right, with this massive Hadoop cluster, right, yes. all the data mining and the predictive techniques you can use, right? So what's your prediction? Who's going to be the NBA champion this year? <laughs> and so I can go start doing betting now, huh? Well, so um, so uh, I do know, and, and I won't share. Uh, well, I want to share, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right, we're in the predictive business, we can read your mind, so you better <laughs> share, right? <laughs> Yes, uh, and I think it's interesting what can be done uh, from that perspective. Let's switch the gears to the cloud out here uh, and how the cloud, data economy, IoT, how these things are converging together. And Omar, I'll start with you. I know you guys had acquired a, a cloud company a few years back and cloud is a big, big push for CenturyLink, right? So why don't you share, right? Because, you know, if you talk to every single CXO, you know, digitization, cloud are big thing, right? And if they don't embark on the journey, they will go fail. So just share yeah. in terms of what you guys are doing, what you're seeing, and thoughts for the emerging yeah. entrepreneurs. I mean, I, I see, so our roots were telco, right? Mm -hmm. I see it transform being, from being a phone where you pick up a phone, talk to somebody, mm -hmm. to, to the iPhone 6. Same thing is happening in our business. We have transformed into an IT services company. Mm -hmm. so, so why is that the case, right? Uh, with all the data, that's being generated, uh, we have thousands and thousands of old application that are sitting on our prem. And all of us are under pressure to post those great margins. So it's not that we can go out and hire you know, another, so we have 40, 48,000 employees, we can't hire another 50,000 employees to work on the new stuff. We are now looking at opportunities where we have old applications that may be running on IBM old mainframes, having, us manage that for our customers and ourselves in the cloud while putting the new stuff in, in a hybrid cloud type situation. This is actually helping us build many, many other solutions. So we have solutions now you know, for, hospi uh, for, for uh, hospitality industries, for financial industries, for healthcare. And you know, Tom and I were talking some use cases. These use cases are being generated. We know what we know today but there's a lot more stuff out there that we don't know, right? So we are trying to transform, cloud is all about innovation, cloud is all about agility, about velocity, and it's the two, for us, it's two worlds are coming together now. Because yeah. we, have, we have the network, you talked about our network, yeah. right? What we can offer is take that network, add it with cloud, provide an SLA, end to end SLA, there's not, too many players out there who can do that. May, may I just jump on this cloud? Sure, absolutely, um, absolutely. So uh, we're, we're proud to be partner with CenturyLink and, and offer a cloud service with them. Uh, in, in the data space, uh, we have a notion that data has gravity. And so if data is like in your data center and you're doing analysis on it, you know, you're going to want to keep it in your data center. It's hard to put it up to the cloud. What's interesting, though, is all the new exciting data that's driving the transformation of industry is not originating in the data center. It's originating in the cloud. It's all of our mobile devices. It's all the sensor devices. It is, you know, that, it's the social data. It's the communication data. That's all in the cloud. And that does not want to come into a data center. It's too hard to fit into a data center. That, the new data has gravity and it's going to land in the cloud. And we are big proponents that a lot of the future analytics and a lot of the work with data in the future, because that data is outside the enterprise, uh, is going to be done in the cloud. And to me, cloud era, cloud sounds really good, huh? Yeah, okay. we're growing into our name. Great, great. You know, maybe I'll ask another one, right? Uh, around the, there's a big uh, buzz around cybersecurity. Yeah. Right? And uh, it really boils down to, you know, in case of CenturyLink, you have 20% of the global internet data, and then what you can do from the threat intelligence, right? Same thing with cloud era. Maybe share, you know, what's your view on this entire cybersecurity with the hacks which happened, right? Or what kind of opportunity? It's not only creating uh, for some of the emerging entrepreneurs, right? Uh, this is a big, big topic in mind of every single CXO who I'm talking to. Uh, so let me start. So security is a huge, huge, huge opportunity for us. Uh, a lot of business that we do, you know, is with the U.S. government. Mm -hmm. And everything has to be secure. So I've got a team of 
let's say, a huge team of ex-FBI, CIA officials. They sit there, they analyze all kind of data day in, day out, try to predict what could go wrong. I mean, you know, the hacker world is much more sophisticated. I have to think that they are at least 10 feet or 10 steps ahead of us. So we are always catching up. So now we are looking at, like, calculating this algorithm to be able to predict when this next DDoS attack is going to happen. How is this next social email that came to us or that will come to us will have an impact on our business? Uh, so it's top of everybody's mind, and uh, every customer we go talk to really ask about that. I was, Glenn and I, who was, who was our CEO, were at, uh, with, with John Chamber at one of his events, and he had invited the top 50 CEOs in the world. And I tell you, the first thing that came out of most of those CEOs, how do I protect my business? And if we carry 20% of the data, I mean, you know, we are responsible for that protection, so it's obviously important to us to protect that. Great, great, man. Tom? Well, I, I love the topic of security, so I'll, I'll cover two things, if that's all right. So the first off is data security. Um, very proud what we're doing at Hadoop is we're, we're treating data security differently than the last time databases got developed. So think in the early 90s, you know, relational databases were building, and it wasn't until really 10 years later that we started saying, oh, we've got to secure the data. We started putting other software around these databases, uh, and we still do that. We're just, you know, adding, adding more and more software. What we're doing with Hadoop is we're making security a design criteria of the database itself. So we do uh, natively in the system. It's you know, authentication, access controls, auditing of the data. But most importantly, what we did working with Intel is we added the ability to encrypt all data in Hadoop. Not sensitive data, not just some of the data, but all data. And the way we did it is we now have encryption done in the hardware, in the chip. And so uh, MasterCard, who's very concerned about credit card data, all of our credit cards, uh, has now not only PCI, PCI certified our platform, but they represent it as a secure data vault, and they're going to every retailer saying, put all your credit card data in this secure data vault. This just happened in the last year because we designed it in versus bolting it on. The next thing that uh, you talk about cybersecurity now, not data security, but cybersecurity, that's a big data problem. And the most common use case today for Hadoop is cybersecurity intelligence. And this platform is um, extending what we've done in SIM tools before, sec uh, security uh, information event management systems. I last ran a company called ArcSight, which was the largest provider of those tools, and now we're augmenting it with Hadoop, because in Hadoop, it's not about machine logs. We now have communications, we have videos, we have voice. Uh, we can take you know, Twitter feeds. You can take a lot more data and do uh, the more advanced cybersecurity uh, analytics. Uh, great, great. Uh, you know, and, uh, we are closing towards the time out here. So uh, my, uh, my last question out here, based on the question I'm seeing out here as well, you know, what are the key sound bites, right, for the emerging entrepreneurs, right? As some of them are just thinking of starting a company. Some of them have started the companies and uh, either bootstrapping it or raising money, right? Uh, so some of the key sound bites, uh, uh, to me, you know, the topics we're talking about, IoT, cloud, security, big data, you know, the next decade is going to create a huge amount of opportunities for people to really start thinking about creating more value. And as I was sharing, right, uh, you know, the, a lot of the Fortune 500 companies may not exist if they don't adapt to the changing environment. Uh, so uh, maybe Amar, I'll start with you. What are the key messages, sound bites, which will help them uh, uh, go wrap things up? And well, besides what Jack said, it's all about people, so yeah. it starts with that. I say be agile, be nimble. Listen to your customer, help transform businesses. You know, this big data uh, evolution that has started will change many, many business models. Certainly have changed our business model. So if you come to, to me and say, I have an idea, I may not be as interested, but you say, I understand your problem. There are a few ways to solve it. We'll be all ears. Very quick, Tom. Uh, well, so I'm, uh, I'm uh, just thinking a, a young uh, lady uh, found me behind the screen here uh, and approached me with an idea. And, and, and she's probably in the audience, and I won't out your idea here. Um, but she, she, she approached me, and she says, I have an idea in the healthcare industry, and it's around paramedics to make them more efficient. 
and she was explaining her idea about this, you know, a way of making more efficient this one area. And in my mind, I was sitting there thinking, wow, what if this young girl can transform how paramedics and ambulances operate, how they communicate? I mean, it was just much more of a bigger what if idea than here's my idea. And, and if you're out here in the audience, uh, you know, take, take your idea and, and think bigger about, you know, that whole very inefficient system of paramedics and ambulances and how they're dispatched and, um, and how they diagnose patients and all the communication. There's a tremendous opportunity. And so you got to think of like, not how do I make this a little more efficient, but how do I, how do you transform something that happens, you know, thousands and thousands of times a day and is very inefficient. Um, and, and just look for those big ideas. Great, great. Now, so to, just to summarize, right, now, Tom, Amr, this was really, really uh, helpful, uh, the, your thoughts on different topics, right? If I were to sum it up for the emerging entrepreneurs and based on what we heard from Jack and Tom, uh, Amir and Susie, right? You know, you got to really dream, dream big. And uh, for the folks who are in the corporate world, right? Uh, uh, you know, if you, if you have certain ideas, uh, dream about them and uh, uh, go make it happen. And obviously as you're in this entrepreneurial journey, there'll be ups and downs. And uh, you got to just take them in the stride. And the big thing is you have to believe in yourself. And you got to ensure that you uh, create a powerful ecosystem around you. And here, you know, you get uh, Cloudera, CenturyLink, right? Uh, could be two powerful partners <laughs> for you to engage and uh, rev up your revenue out there. Uh, so again, uh, uh, thanks for uh, uh, Tom and Amir for uh, joining us today. And uh, great talk out here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Amir, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.